Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs. Give me your Bitcoins. This is an anarchy moment. Complete spur of the moment thing. Went out, got up this morning, I went running, did a short little run because I needed to get back. I got a crap ton of shit to do. And I'm checking the email and I'm getting some notifications of comments over on the YouTube. I put up, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, it doesn't matter, who cares. I put up the video for my Anarchy Moment number 60, Are You a Slave or a Prisoner? And I don't really know what I said because I don't remember any particular podcast usually, but judging from the title, I was probably talking about the distinguishing, the distinguishing between the slave and the prisoner in our society. And I got a couple of comments on that. I got one that simply said, from Chopper7020, he simply said, well illustrated. Thank you, Chopper. I appreciate you saying so, because when I have clarity in my podcast, I, I'm, that makes me happy. Because normally I don't have clarity. Normally I just babble like an idiot. All right, then this other guy, who J.D. Zeinrichzik11, I don't know, I'm probably mispronouncing whatever that's supposed to be. Anyway, he talked about how he would love it if I did the marijuana episode. I do need to do the marijuana episode. Sorry about the God damn it. I have so much going on. Yeah, I have a lot to say. Speaking from the heart of Fort Collins, Colorado, where we have a marijuana dispensary now, quote-unquote, legally, thus meaning with the permission of the slave masters, operating in downtown Fort Collins, and watching all of the stoners shamble like zombies towards the dispensary. It's like you can tell the dispensary opens at 10 a.m. because at 9.57, if you're in Old Town, there's this group, this, this group of unrelated people, but they're all shambling in the same direction. It is, honest to God, like the fucking zombie apocalypse. Anyway, yes, I got to talk about that. Here's what I want to talk about. I wasn't even going to record right now. This just, boom, just came out of reading this comment. Reading these comments about Anarchy Moment number 60. Are you a slave or a prisoner? I want to talk about the slave-prisoner analogy for a minute. Because I think it's really important to be able to nail down ideas and concepts and understand them. So, with the the slave prisoner, this is something that I, and the slave prisoner is important. The distinction between the slave and the prisoner, if you haven't listened to Anarchy Moment number 60, go listen to it. But the distinction between the slave and the prisoner is that slaves are statist. Slaves do not recognize that they are slaves. The 99%, they are slaves. The Occupy Wall Street, they are slaves. The you know, the Christians and all these, they are slaves. The feminists, they are slaves. Prisoners are people who are anarcho-capitalists like ourselves who recognize that we do not have freedom, but there's nothing we can necessarily do about it. And, and that, that, sounds, oh, that sounds terrible to say it that way. Let me start this again. The slave is the statist, the person who does not recognize he has no freedom. Right, The slave is the person who thinks, oh, marijuana is legal now. I have freedom. Without being able to recognize it, well, no, you're only allowed to have so many plants and you're only allowed to have so much poundage and you have to be a certain age. And also, it, it's not le- just because you have permission from a slave master, that does, getting permission from a slave master does not mean you're free. Getting permission from a slave master reaffirms your slavery because you need permission from the slave master, right? It's like the exception to the rule justifies the rule, right? If, you, if such and such is an exception to a rule, the rule, by definition, must exist. Otherwise, situation X cannot be an exception to the rule. If there is no rule, there can be no exception. Okay, so the exception proves the rule does exist. Okay. If you need marijuana to be legalized so that you can have permission to smoke marijuana, the fact that you need permission to smoke marijuana, which is something you do with your own body, proves you are a slave. It proves the government owns your body. So people who, those, those are the slaves. Those of us who recognize, yes, we are slaves, yes, 
we ultimately our bodies are owned by the government. Ultimately, the government can come in my door right now and shoot me in the head. A government agent could kill me right this moment, and there would be zero repercussions other than that agent getting a raise and possibly a medal for taking down a dangerous anarcho-capitalist who is going to overthrow the government. So I recognize that my body, in, in a practical sense, is, yes, owned by the government. The government can do anything they want to me and get away with it. So I am a prisoner. I think it's raining outside. It's monsoon season here in Fort Collins, Colorado. It has rained to some extent, like every day, almost every day, for, God, like the past three weeks maybe, even if it's just like this 17-second drizzle, as opposed to, for those of you who in places get real rain, like I'm from down in Texas near the Gulf, where it would rain for three, four, five days straight, just rain, rain, rain. We, there's nothing like that in Colorado. Around here, if it rains for more than an hour, that is like a fucking god sent miracle and typically when it rains here it's no joke 15 to 20 minutes of rain and it's this when it's over with you can see still dry splotches on the sidewalk so i think it's raining outside again because it's monsoon season anyway you don't give a shit about that do you you're like shut the fuck up asshole talk about anarcho-capitalism all right even before I was an anarcho-capitalist way back in the day when I had to walk uphill to listen to Rush Limbaugh. I, oh, what's today? I should, I'm putting that on my list. Listen to Rush Limbaugh. I have not listened to Rush Limbaugh in years. Well, at least a year. And you're saying, why would you listen to Rush Limbaugh? Well, because as an anarcho-capitalist, I do not have to be afraid of people whose ideas are different than mine. And furthermore, because I like to argue about argue about, argue against other ideas from an informed position, I listen to things that I disagree with, just like I read books that I disagree with. So I need to listen to Rush Limbaugh and see what the hell he's saying these days. All right, you don't care about that either. All right, and my coffee cup is getting low, so I have to finish this before I run out of coffee. Many years ago, back when I had to walk uphill both ways in the snow to listen to Rush Limbaugh, even back then, I used I, I recognized there was a difference here. I used to say that you can't stop being a slave until you recognize that you're a slave. Right? It's like you can't stop being overweight until you recognize that you're overweight. You can't clean your kitchen cabinet until you recognize the kitchen cabinets need to be cleaned. You can't you, you can't solve a problem until you recognize the problem exists. You cannot change a situation until you recognize the situation exists, right? You cannot reject democracy until you recognize democracy doesn't work. You cannot reject the state until you recognize the state doesn't work. So you have to identify, and you can call it what you want. Again, it's semantics, but I, I do recognize and acknowledge that it also makes a difference how you approach things. It's like I talked about with the Scott Adams book, having a goal as opposed to having a system. A system is superior to a goal. Some, you, know, you can make arguments that something could be a goal or a system, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't fucking matter. You semantically describe it in the way that's the most appealing. Right? It's like picking up girls. You can make it into a chore or you can make it into a game. If it's a game, it's fun. If it's a chore... It's not any fun. All right. Slave prisoner, you have to recognize there is a problem in order to solve the problem. You have to recognize there's an opportunity for improvement in order to begin the improvement. You have to see new possibilities in order to go after those new possibilities. You have to see the danger ahead in order to turn away from the danger. You have to see the potential pitfalls of a plan in order to prepare for the pitfalls. Okay, You must be aware of X in order to respond to X. We who are prisoners, we are aware of X. We are aware of the state. You who are slaves, the 99%, the statist, you are not aware of X. Now, let me leave that there for a second. 
and come and talk about something else and I'm going to bring these together if I don't completely lose my train of thought, which I've already lost like seven fucking times in this 10-minute podcast. I just want to throw this out. This is completely unrelated, but I just want to say it. Abortion has kind of just come up a little bit and it's floating around in my world right now as a topic. And I just want to be really clear. I am not against abortion. If anything, I want there to be more abortions. I want more abortions because if you look at the quality of women today, if you look at their ability to be mothers and you look at the children they're raising and you look at the children that are coming out of public school, no, I do not want more of those on the planet. I want as many abortions as possible because statistically speaking, 99% of every you know, of the children being born, they're going to grow up to be statist. They're going to grow up to be psychos. They're going to grow up to be rapists. They're going to grow up to be, yeah. You know, I mean, all of the. Again, I've said this before. Every psycho killer had a mother. Every mass shooter had a mother. Every rapist had a mother. All of them went to public school. All of them had 12 years of public school controlled by the matriarchy. Most of them went to college. Okay, the school systems and the parents these days, primarily mothers, because there's so many single mothers, are churning out the most worthless fucking humans that have ever walked the earth. They're all doped up on medication for their personalities. So I just want to just throw that out. I want more abortions, not fewer. More abortions. All right, back to... Hold on, give me a second to coalesce my thoughts because there, there's a point here. And I want to I want to tie all this together. All right. Can you make an anarcho-capitalist? This stems from. This has come up again. This repeatedly comes up with me. Is Aristotle in his distinction between men, women, children, and slaves? Aristotle. Aristotle? Yes. I had to make sure. No wait. Am I mixing up my philosophers? Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, yes. Aristotle in the politics puts forth the notion that there are natural slaves. There are people who are naturally slaves. I have said many times I agree with this. The natural slavery argument has been used, of course, you know, the Germans loosely invoked natural slaves to get rid of the Jews. Many, well, I'm listening to, God damn it, what's the name of that book I'm listening to right now? It's, it's a libertarian classic. I can't even remember the name. I keep on... Nah, nah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, in the book, they talk about how in the early days of the American colonies, Aristotle's concept of natural slavery was invoked in an attempt to justify the slavery of black people. So people are always trying to invoke the natural slavery concept, and you can tell the people who attempt to invoke natural slavery to oppress other people are in fact the natural slaves themselves. And I've talked about this before, but I don't think I've talked about it in the last couple of years. Here's why. There are natural slaves. There are absolutely 100% superior humans. We call them anarcho-capitalist. And there are inferior humans. We call them statist. There are natural slaves, but you cannot distinguish the natural slaves because of anything that has to do well and now I'm I'm pushing into the all right let me say, I'm gonna say this you cannot distinguish them because of anything that has to do with DNA okay you cannot distinguish the natural slaves because they all have black skin or they're all Jewish or they're all blonde or they all have green eyes or they all have vaginas or they all have penises or they all have a index finger that's longer than their middle finger or they all have broad foreheads or they all have you know orange beards what the fuck ever the point is there's no exterior marking on the natural slaves that distinguishes them so that's why I, well it's the jews are the natural slaves well no are there a lot of Jews who are statist? Of course there are. Are there ANCAP Jews? Of course there are. Oh, the black people are the natural slaves. Well, no. Well, yes, most black people are statist, as are most white people, orange people, yellow people, red people, green people. There are some ANCAP. Okay, so you cannot determine whether a person is a natural slave 
or whether a person is an anarcho-capitalist based on what they look like or who their parents are and such shit. The way you determine is from their worldview. Now, I hesitated when I would say it's not related to DNA because, of course, all right, see, this is where we were going long and deep, but I just need to get this in there. Where does a worldview come from? So there's a worldview that distinguishes the natural slave, the inferior human, from the anarcho-capitalist, the superior human. There's a worldview that allows us, that makes that distinction. Worldviews come from the mind, the brain, the understanding, the emotions, the reasoning. Right? Where does all of that come from? Some of you may think it comes from God, soul, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Ultimately, sorry boys, it comes from brain chemistry. It comes from what is happening in your mind. Where does what's happening in your mind, where does your brain chemistry come from? Well, ultimately, it comes from your DNA. So when I say that being a natural slave or being a superior human isn't related to DNA, something you know, from DNA, it's actually not quite true. That, so that's why I just wanted to clarify that. When I said that, that it wasn't really true. Again, it's semantics. But this is why it's important to talk about these things and to talk about this in the greatest detail possible because that's how we enhance our understanding. So ultimately, those of us who are ANCAPs are ANCAPs because of our DNA. Our brain chemistry is such that we can grasp the concept of the non-aggression principle. And the inferior humans around us are people that cannot grasp it. Now, let's just throw this in. Of course, now we know that brain chemistry is not just a matter of DNA. And it's not either. Brain chemistry is affected, of course, by your health, your diet, your exercise, and the environment you surround yourself with. And increasingly today, what kind of medication your parents put your children on. This is another reason why I want to see as many abortions as possible. Because all of these children who are on these mind-altering medications that destroy their personalities, they're all going to grow up to be statist. There is not going to be a single fucking anarcho-capitalist come out. There, I mean, there'll be, just like back in the days when Satanism was cool. I, I'm, by the way, I used to be a Satanist, like the legitimate religion, and I've talked about it before on the podcast, and I want to talk about it again in the future, because Satanism has a lot of very anarcho-capitalist aspects to it. It also has a lot of flaws. Right, there's going to be a lot of people who are in this medication who say, I'm an anarchist, anarchy in the UK, man, woo! You know, because they're trying to just rebel and shit, just like back in the heyday of Satanism, there were all these little teenagers wearing black, like, yeah, I'm a Satanist, man. Yeah, dude. It's like, you can't even fucking spell Satanist. Shut up, you little shit. There's not going to be any true, legit, legit dog. It's like legit. B-I-G. Yo. There are not going to be any legitimate anarcho-capitalist who are on mind-altering medication. I challenge you. It's okay. I'm okay with being wrong. You might find one, two, maybe three. You're not going to find more than five. You find me like more than five people who have been on mind-altering medication since they're like 10 years old to when they're 25 and they became actual real anarcho-capitalists, not just people who wear anarchy t-shirts to be cool. That's another reason why the state wants to dope people up so much. Okay. Now we're going to bring it home. Can you... An argument that's come up in the anarcho-capitalist world before is can you convert somebody to anarcho-capitalism? Are anarcho-capitalists created or are they just born that way? Can you take somebody who is a statist and convert them? And I've always said no. I think I've always said that. Who knows? So listen to the old podcast. Maybe I didn't say that. I say that now. I've said that for a couple of years now. I think. All right, if nothing else, I said it just now. I'm pretty sure I've been saying that for a while. Look, I, honest to God, I've said, I know I've said this before. I came out of the fucking womb an anarcho-capitalist. I just never knew it because I was never exposed to what anarcho-capitalism is until a couple of years ago. Two, three years ago, maybe? Again, I don't know. Go listen to the podcast. At some point, I was like, oh my God, there's this anarcho I, fi I finally fucking understand. I think it was actually when I started listening to Ben Stone, Bad Quaker, Bad Quaker Podcast, badquaker.com, Ben 
Stone, one of the most brilliant, articulate anarcho-capitalists. If you don't listen to Ben Stone, as soon as you finish listening to this, go to badquaker.com, download every fucking podcast, that's what I did, start at the beginning, and just listen to every fucking one of them. Just the, the, the brilliance. I mean this, the brilliance, he is so articulate. His ability to explain things, his knowledge of history, his analysis. Oh my God, I mean, it's, it, it will make you, you won't even need sex for months after listening to these podcasts. That's how fucking good Ben Stone is. i telling you, he is in the pantheon of anarcho-capitalist. All right. I believe it, it's a brain chemistry thing. We are truly superior to the natural slaves. We, the prisoners, we, the anarcho-capitalists, are superior to the slaves. And you can't transition from natural slave to anarcho-capitalist. This is why, as correct as we are in our worldview, this is why we're going to lose. This is one of the things I disagree with Ben Stone about, because Ben Stone says that when there's a demand for freedom, we will have freedom. And I agree with that part. I, if, if there is a demand by the people for freedom, there will be freedom. I agree with him on that. Where Ben and I disagree is I think, and I don't mean to speak for Ben, but I think that Ben actually does believe that sometime in the future, there will be this overwhelming desire for freedom. And there will not be. It will not happen. I'm sorry to be the pessimist, but again, this is the cynical libertarian society, not the optimistic libertarian society. There will never be a great demand for freedom because the natural slaves, they have a different brain chemistry than we do. They are. And I'm not saying this is an insult. It's like saying, well, men can't have babies. It's not an insult. It's a biological fact. Men don't have uteruses. They can't make babies. It, it's not a moral judgment here. It's a biological fact. The 99% have a brain chemistry difference. That means they are statist coming out of the womb. They cannot comprehend the idea that killing other people to benefit yourself is wrong. The, the, when you explain to them that the government is killing people so that they can have Obamacare, they cannot any more than, than a man cannot get pregnant. Doesn't matter how much he wants to. They, they cannot understand that the government killing people and taking things from other people so they can have Obamacare is wrong. They can't. It's not a matter of wanting to. They do not have the neural connections in their brain that allows them to process this. And this is why having a conversation with a statist is completely futile. The slaves can't become prisoners because the slaves, they cannot recognize their own slavery. They cannot recognize the problem. It's, oh, God, it's just like that movie. I, it's a documentary I've talked about it in the past. Can't remember the name of it. It's about democracy. And it was about elections being stolen and voting fraud and this other stuff. And, of course, it was a liberal Democrat perspective. And the big buildup of the movie was these the people making the movie, they got some voting machines, computerized voting machines. And if I could, I wish I could remember the name of this movie. I really recommend you watching it because it will help so well to illustrate what's wrong with democracy. Look through the old podcast. You should be able to find it. Anyway, the big buildup of the movie, the people making the movie, they get these computerized voting machines. The company that makes the computerized voting machine says to them, this machine cannot be tampered with. Now, those of you who know anything about computers are now rolling on the floor laughing. The people making the movie went and found some computer geeks 
and said, hi, we have these voting machines that can't be tampered with. The software on here cannot be tampered with, cannot be hacked, cannot be cracked. Of course, the computer geeks are rolling on the floor laughing. The documentary maker said, crack the computer software. So the computer geeks said, yeah, give me seven minutes. And I'm, they didn't really say give me seven minutes, okay? I'm firing for effect. They gave them to the computer geeks. The computer geeks gave, gave the voting machines back. The people then voted in the voting machines and they voted openly in front of each other so everybody knew what they voted. And then they looked at the results on the voting machine and sure enough, what the people actually voted and what the results from the computerized voting machine that cannot be tampered with showed were different from each other. Why? Because the computer geeks cracked the software and modified it. Now, all of that is obvious, right? Those of you who are ANCAPs are like, wow, man, that's like telling me the sun is hot. It's like telling me water is wet. Yes, we know this, all right, but this, that's, that's not the pivotal moment. The pivotal moment is after that is revealed, there's this one stupid bitch in the video who starts crying. She starts crying crying. Tears are coming out. She's like, our democracy has been stolen. And this is the slavery. It's the inability to recognize that, first of all, you never had democracy, so your democracy can't be stolen. But more importantly, no, democracy is the fucking problem. You see, if there were no voting, there can be no voting fraud.